I feel like they're referencing him too much. They're actually talking about him. He's gonna show up, isn't he? <laughs> she can't see it. That's, they've forgotten three times now. You summoned him. Why did most you? What you didn't shouldn't have talked about him. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, and today I'll be reacting to Avatar: The Last Airbender, season three, episode seven. Now, the last episode we got to see like how the war actually started and see the connection that Ruku has to it. Because I had so many questions around like how the past Avatar failed to stop a one hundred year war. So it was so cool to see how his relationship with the Fire Lord affects everything and that's basically the way you fix it. You have to fix the relationship between the Avatar and the Fire Lord. But yeah, other than that, we also have like a load of story threads just floating around. You have the explosive assassin who's still out there and still a mystery in whatever it is he does. Then the other one that's been on my mind is that Iroh has now gone into beast mode, basically. He's gone huge, he's worked out a bunch and like, why? I don't get why he needs to do it. I have no idea what he's planning and it's just concerning to me that first off he's done all that, then he's also been able to, I guess, get some of the guards on his side then, because he was able to get a message to Zuko in the last episode. So he's getting more control and more power in the prison cell and he's also worked out a bunch. So I'm very concerned about what on earth is gonna happen there. But yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like, subscribe, it really does help the channel to grow. And if you do enjoy my content and you wanna help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'm uploading these videos and the full reaction a week in advance. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. With that said, let's just dive on in. That is an awful looking statue. Is that Ozai? <laughs> Oh, great. Bad thing's happening. You betrayed me! You brought this on yourself. I had no choice. What's happening here? This feels odd. Guards, Fire Nation, what you, you, Toph? Is this a Toph episode? Are we actually getting something with Toph now? I feel, I feel like she doesn't need it. She's already an amazing character, but we had so many like character-focused episodes that are we actually gonna get something with Toph here? <laughs> this is earlier. What are you doing? Okay. I'm ready for some training. Okay, so you're on good terms here. Hasn't started going bad yet. Absolutely love that. Love how they show that off. So is he getting able to do Toph's vision thing? He's actually pretty good. Good job, Twinkle Toes. Visualize, then attack. Okay, they're actually training him blindfolded. <gasps> ah. ah. What's the matter? Can't handle some dirt, madam fussy britches. Oh, dear. I thought the tension was done between you two. Is it back? <laughs> that really did not do a lot compared to her throwing a boulder at you. <laughs> Are we taking a break? <laughs> no, and they're not even look, paying attention to Ang. <laughs> Hungry for a mud pie? I'll give you a mud pie. Where's this tension come from? You two were fine before. Uh, guys, I thought we were supposed to be training me. <laughs> While Katara cleans up, let's go have some fun. Yes! Okay, it feels odd though. Where is that? That feels like that's been stewing. I thought they were fine from the episodes we've seen. Why are they back to being at odds with each other? Look at all those messenger hawks. You know, I've been thinking about getting one for myself. The assassin had one of those. Is this going to link back to him? No, he didn't have a hawk. He had something evil. He had something worse than that. We can get more money. Right there. I love it, she just senses all this stuff. This is where you seeing people are at a disadvantage. Everyone guesses wrong because the dealer moves the rock at the last minute. And she can see it. I can feel it with my earth bending. Oh, that's amazing. <gasps> is she going to swindle this guy? So this guy's obviously a scammer. I'm fine with this. If she wants to swindle this guy, he seems bad anyway. He's taking people's money. Want to play a friendly game? How could I possibly play? I'm blind. <laughs> oh, she's mean. She's evil. <laughs> she's way too good at pretending to be helpless. She knows where it is. She can sense that. A second one. Flamey Otoff. You are amazing at this. Would you like to make the game a little more interesting? Okay, there we go. He thinks, yeah, okay, yep, yeah, it's just a guess. You don't know her. Friends find sword there. Then I'll put up 20 silver pieces against it. She's got it. She's got it. She'll be fine. I'll do it for 40 silver pieces. <laughs> 40 silver pieces it is. Okay, you're not suspicious at all with that giant price jump. You two, there's not going to be any chance with you two. It's a swindler. Yep, disappeared. Disappeared again. Oh, he's trying to get rid of all three. And she curved it back in. That's so cool. 
Sorry, little lady, but... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> he looks so confused. And they liked it. <laughs> I'm fine with that. That's pretty good. The guy was a scammer. He was stealing money and you just got it back and used it for good things. Toph got us money. She scammed one of those guys in town who moves the... Don't say scam. I would say more Robin Hood style. So she cheated. Hey, I only cheated because he was cheating. Yes, I fine. I'm a cheater. perfectly fine with that. On board with that. This isn't something we should make a habit of doing. Why? Because it's fun and you hate... But if you keep... Oh, uh, no, I... Okay. It could draw attention. Fun! No, oh, that's just sad. It, she kind of right, it can draw attention. If you keep winning like this... You're going to draw so much attention. And then she's going to control the things on the ground. Okay, I hope that all the people they're scamming are scammers themselves. <laughs> all she has to do is look to her head. Oh, that's so crazy. Well, this is going to be a piece of cake for her. It's a giant rock hammer. But this will give it away, surely. It's a tiny blind child wielding a hammer. <laughs> Playing it off, I think, maybe. Yeah. No one's gonna question that! Okay, this is just some rich guy. Oh. How'd you even know this guy's a scammer? He was just passing through! Oh, sucker. Okay, mm, okay, that kind of shows some character. He didn't even try to check for a pulse, just legged it. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Okay, no, this is getting this is getting bad. Could you for once stop being such a sourpuss and just lighten up? Yeah, stop, I mean, this case is drawing attention. You have a little blind child going around. You you're very distinct. You're a little small blind child winning a bunch of this stuff. It's gonna spread. The word's gonna spread about you. They were controlling over you, so you ran away, and now you act like your parents don't exist. Really, is a tough episode. Cool. You just feel guilty. I do hate them. Oh. I think you miss them. Probably. But you just don't want to deal with that. That's still family. These scams put us all at risk and we don't need that. We've already got some third-eyed freak after us. Oh, he's been referenced. I'm agreeing with Katara. I've come up with a name for him. What do you think of Sparky Sparky Boom Man? Fine, go with it. I feel like they're referencing him too much. They're actually talking about him. He's going to show up, isn't he? Okay, so Toph's acting out because of her parents and because of all the control issues there. But she's missing them, so she's acting sort of stubborn and crazy because she doesn't want to admit, she doesn't want to think about it, so she's doing all this instead. So she's homesick, and this is like what's happening because she's homesick. Hockey, welcome to Team Avatar. My name's Sokka, and I'm your new owner. Got a hawk, really? Already a lemur in our group, so I don't want to see any fighting. Hawkey, is this like a new companion? Pretty feathers. Oh, great, see, idiots. You're right, Hockey. This is bad. Yeah, okay, so... Oh, that's disgusting. Okay, so you have a wanted poster of her now. That's great. That means, yeah, there are definitely people after her, but how do they do that? That's a wanted bounty. That has to go through proper channels. How, why would scammers do that? I found something that you're not gonna like. Well, it sounds like a sheet of paper, but I guess you're referring to what's on the sheet. <laughs> she can't see it! They've nicknamed you The Runaway. A wanted poster! That's so great! <laughs> of course she's happy about it! I love my new nickname. The name is kind of good. Does it look good? <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, it does look pretty good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite accurate. Don't be such a worry wart like your sister. Now you have plenty of money to help with the invasion plan. Mm. Well, that is true. Idiot. I had this idea of making armor for Appa. Really? You know what? Make it an atlas. Oh, I no, do no, no, like no, no. expensive atlases. And you just bought off soccer, great. And that's why this wanted poster is going to stay our little secret. I'm sure there are more. As soon as Katara goes into town, she'll see him. A messenger bird. Now we can send messages all over the world, even to Grand Grand. Can it really fly anywhere, not just Fire Nation? Hockey, Grand Grand, South Pole. That's going to be absolutely nothing. <laughs> off scamming again? Yes, we were. Of course. And I this, is t this is getting bad. You've already got one to posters, and now you're still doing it. What's this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you people? I they did it again. <laughs> where did you get that? It doesn't matter where I got it. The fact is, you, you went through my stuff. Oh, I thought you could have just gone to town and found it. Stuff was messy, and I was just straightening up, and I happened to. You sneaked. That's a lie. You're lying, Katara. She can tell. But you've been so out of control lately. 
I knew something was up. Both of you are in the wrong and it's, just, it's not good. Someone needs to intervene here. Because you're not my mom and you're not their mom. Ooh. I never said I was. But you are kind of the mother of the group. You think it's your job to boss everyone around, but it's not. You're just a regular kid like the rest of us. So stop acting like you can tell me what to do. Is this developing both of them? Is this developing both Top and Katara? Is it both of their focus? I don't act that way. Sokka, do I act motherly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying out of this one. Good choice, good choice. Stop rubbing your eye and speak clearly when you talk. You're not helping yourself at all. Around you right now. Well, I can't be around you! This is interesting. Toph definitely can't deal with having, like, parents because she got the parent issue. When you have people in the group that act like parents, it's definitely going to cause friction. So I guess this makes sense. They don't need the sort of tension that I guess I thought was missing. The tension is there just from what they do. I'm going to send a note to Katara and say it's from Toph who wants to apologize. A note? She... can she write? Dear Katara. Yeah, there's emphasis on this. She can't write, you idiots. <laughs> They've forgotten three times now. I know this is from you, Sokka. <laughs> Toph can't write. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, at least she remembered that time. <laughs> yep, we're idiots. <laughs> well, at least she admitted it. Send a note to Toph pretending it's from Katara. I think we're going to run into a similar problem. She can't read. At least you're kind of learning brought me out here to tell me your sister's not as annoying as I make her- They're all gonna overhear each other. Or well, at least Katara's gonna overhear them. She's always gotta be right about everything, and she gets all bossy and involved and in your business. Change the good things. In a way, I rely on it. There we go. When our mom died, that was the hardest time in my life. Our family was a mess. But Katara, she had so much strength. I'm liking this, because it's Sokka barely mentions how his mom's death affected him. Now I'm getting it. I'm not sure I can remember what my mother looked like. It really seems like my whole life, Katara's been the one looking out for me. That is so sad. When I try to remember my mom, Katara's is the only face I can picture. Oh, that's beautiful, but heartbreaking. She's compassionate and kind, and she actually cares about me. Oh. That's more than my own mom. Oh. Don't say you've overheard over this. I wanna... Katara, stop. You don't need to apologize. I was the one being stupid. She's actually getting apologizing. I'm gonna say I wanna pull a scam with you. Okay. Well, I'm still trying to figure out how this leads into that big tension at the beginning. The ultimate scam. What do you say, Toph? Just me and you. Is this the right direction? This wanted poster says you're worth a lot of money. So I'm gonna turn you in and oh. collect a reward. Okay, so it's fake. Good. Then you metal bend yourself out of jail. Metal bending. Are we gonna see it again, please? How could you do this to me? You betrayed me. You are good actors, both of you. Right thing is its own reward. Well, I'm happy to hear you say that. Candidate. But I still want the actual reward. <laughs> metal door. Good. All right, what? Why? Hey, what kind of cell is this? A wooden one. Why? There's metal ones in there. Why? Do they know? There's no way they know. That's her. That's the girl you were looking for. Oh, great. They all know when you're here. Why did you, you summoned him? Why did must you? What, you didn't, shouldn't have talked about him. Why is he here? We better check it out. You two behave. Oppa's in charge. Ah, <laughs> oh, so is that animal companion going to stay? It's quite nice. That's quite funny. No kidding. Is that why we're sitting in a wooden cage? Quit with the sarcasm. Not for us, Katara. We're the bait. He wants A. Yeah. I can't believe I was so stupid. No, you didn't know he was here. It's not stupid. I wanted to show you that I'm not so motherly. I wanted to show you that I can have fun too. You can. If nothing else, you're at least fun to argue with. No. I was really mad when you said that because, well, because maybe it's true. I love their relationship and how just they're building it. I probably really hurt them. Yeah, maybe. But do you want to feel bad for them? They can't. They wouldn't have let you go. They their decision to keep you there wouldn't have let Aang learn earthbending, and it would have resulted in all out. He wouldn't have become master avatar. Okay, great. Yep. It sensed good. I love it so much. I could listen to it all day. You know, I'm starting to think that name doesn't quite fit. <laughs> sparky, sparky, boom, man. Oh no, I think it fits. It does come out of his forehead. How? What? So he breathes in, and there's a hole in his head. He breathes in, and then it goes out of his head. But what about your meteor bracelet? You can make a saw. I left it back at camp. Oh. Sweat? Um, Katara? <laughs> okay. Just fine. This is so creative. I'm making my own water. This is awesome. 
Okay, this is so cool. Katara, you're a genius. Yeah. He's thinking genius. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that is awesome. That is so creative. I really hope the Fire Nation people at least evacuated this place before all this happened. This guy is too good. He shoots fire from his brain. Yeah. We should split up. He can't chase us both. He's only gonna chase one of you. Yeah, he only wants out. I love the sound. The sound design is absolutely amazing. Ow, oh, dear. Okay, no. Please be acting. Okay. Thank you. That is awesome. Get out of here. <laughs> just my first in the head. What do you want? Oh, I thought he was gonna try and explode from there. That'd be stupid. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh! What that do? Hit him right in the spot? Oh! Did you break him? That. Okay, and they're gone. Is that permanent? Perfect name for that guy. Combustion Man. Good job, Sokka. Combustion Man, cool. I feel like explosions would have been closer. Okay, but uh, um, so they hit, so that's the how that's the key. You have to hit him in the third eye. What is it, Toph? I need you to write some things down for me. I want to send a letter to my parents. Oh. I'll be happy to help. Oh, that's amazing. So, and the, is the bird? Okay, the bird came in useful. Does that mean it's gone? How fast can it come back? It's kind of funny. That's so cool. So she's actually sort of trying to get back into communication with them. That episode was so nice. That was honestly quite beautiful. That episode had the perfect combination of just action and character development. Seeing how much it went in depth with Katara and her whole mother side, Toph with her destructive nature and being able to develop her further, and then Combustion Man, who looks is absolutely insane. I could listen to like his powers all day. Just the sound design of that is absolutely astonishing. But this also showed off some really creative bending on Katara's part, being able to use sweat to break out of a wooden prison. So I'm so wait, I'm trying to think. Combustion man, did he know Toph had metal bending? Who knows about that? When they first fought, she just used earth, I'm sure. She could sense the metal, but she didn't use metal bending. So somehow he's figured out that she can metal bend. That is interesting. Does he, has he told other people? Does that mean there's not no, no longer like a surprise thing that they can use? Yeah, I really love that we got to go more in depth with, or they at least brought up Katara and Sokka's mum's death again. Because Sokka, we basically never got anything on that. And I'm so happy that it was at least touched upon here. Of course, I you know it was actually quite a big thing. He doesn't remember her. That is heartbreaking. They can't actually picture her face. I can't imagine that. That is so, so sad. And that Katara filled that void and that was basically meant that when he tries to think of his mother, he thinks of Katara. It explains why his relationship with his dad is so strong, because that's the only parent that is not only there, but he can remember. And it is so, so sad. But yeah, this episode also just developed the relationship between Katara and Toph. I think that's just a great relationship anyway. They're the two girls of the group, and they were given friction right from the beginning, that they wouldn't work together, Toph was stubborn, Katara was bossy, obviously clashing. Now it's come back around, where Katara is still almost the mother of the group, and Toph has all those parental issues. They have actually brought that into it and made a friction there, and it's worked on both of them. Katara has, because she's realized that, yeah, because it's not right that she is the mother. She's a kid, she's 14 years old. What happened is dreadful, but it, it, she shouldn't be the one that has to become the mother. It's not, it's not something that should happen. It's bad that she's had to take on that role. So it's nice to see her sort of be able to have fun and let go a little bit. Yes, it's still very much part of her because she's grown up into that role, but it's nice that she can let it go from time to time. Toph loved the development we got there where it's actually done something with her parents because they were kind of just forgotten about. They hired bounty hunters. They're the only sort of voice they had. They, I think, are they dead now? I feel like they're dead. Toph left them in the metal cage and they have no way of getting out of that. I feel like they're just dead in the wilderness somewhere. But yeah, so now we're actually getting some more on Toph's parents and we're getting to see that we, well, at least she thinks she hurt them. I, they probably, yes, but I feel like the dad would probably be more angry than her. He didn't seem like a very, I mean, yes, I guess they do love her, but it's in such a bad way where they were trying to control her every move because they were so afraid that she could hurt herself when she was very much capable. And even when they were confronted with the truth that she's incredibly capable, and even the teacher said that she's probably the most powerful earthbender he's ever seen, they still completely bought back into their own delusion. So I don't think they're hurt. I think they're more scared for their little girl who they think would die at any second. So that, I feel like, um, I, I think the letter will go well. I want to see where that goes. 
maybe the Hulk can come back with a letter just from them. That'd be nice. But yeah, Toph is like the only one in the group. I know, because you have Hakoda, but she's the only one with two parents, I guess. And it'd be nice to get that relationship fixed then, because Aang, of course, Gyatso is gone. Katara and Sokka's mother gone, but they have Hakoda and we've done stuff with that and they have a, they're on a good relationship. But now Toph's is sort of, it's bad, it's bad. That needs fixing. And I feel like that's something that could be really good for Toph's character. That's the one thing that they should be developing. She has a lot of parental issues and I'd love to see that get more focus on. Yeah, Combustion Man, absolutely insane. Can't, I'm not sure which name I prefer. Sparky Sparky Boom Man, that's grown on me. Uh, Combustion Man is definitely more epic, that sort of thing. It makes sense, I guess, marketing. If they made toys of him, Combustion Man sounds better than Sparky Sparky Boom Man. But like, just seeing his powers are so cool. But his, so I honestly like how powerful he is. And then his weakness is so difficult to hit. But it seems like it's kind of really affected him. I wonder if that's sort of permanent, that he can't do that anymore. He got hit in the head. Well, because I'm trying to figure out how it wor how it works. It's, I can't be telepathic. I don't think this show goes into that. But like, I'm, he breathes in, and then I almost, I'm thinking he forces the air through a hole in his head to do this. Is that what's happening there? If so, that's crazy and insane. But it would make so much sense about the rock hitting his head, hitting that spot, almost blocking it, and, because it must be very fragile, that having a hole made there, and then that happened to it. So that must be super fragile. I'm surprised it didn't explode in his head. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when he shows up again, just to see how much that actually did affect him. Because now that gives them an idea. No, they didn't. Did they see it? I hope they saw what they did. I hope they realised that all they have to do is try and hit him in that spot and then he's down. That's what they've got to do. Okay, honestly, this might be my favourite episode from season three so far. Just seeing how well they balance the tone of all these sombre moments where they're talking about, uh, like, their parents, then compared to the action scene, I think that's absolutely amazing. And the way they did the comedy as well, using Toph's blindness, then doing those jokes quite a few times. This was just, they managed to do so much in 20 minutes and I absolutely love that. Looking closer at Toph and seeing her development, I personally didn't think she needed any more development than what she already has, but I guess I kind of forgot her whole parental issues because she's such an incredible character. She was brought in late. She easily became one of the most powerful of the group. And when you do that and you introduce a super powerful character, it's really difficult to try and like, have hum to sort of connect with them and to sort of root for them because you basically bring in a problem solver that's going to make everything a whole lot easier. Toph, they did such a good job at making you feel for her and giving her a good story and just making her almost tragic so you want to see her do well even though she's very capable of it anyway. Now they brought back the story with the parents, with that whole thing, dealing with all of it and I like how they've done it because Katara was obviously the mother of the group from the get-go, that was always there. Now, if it, now they've gone back to dealing with all of it. Toph has her issues with parental figures from her actual parents and now is sort of bled over into Katara's just role because that's what, it's, she's not even took it on because she wants to, it's what she's been brought up to basically do. She filled the void of her mother who died and she didn't really have a choice to do it, she just had to do it. And now she, so Toph and Katara are conflicting over just who they naturally are. Yeah, I hope that this is a sign that Toph can sort of get, I mean, it, all, it still depends on the parents and their attitude towards Toph, but I hope this is a good direction for what could happen with Toph's relationship with her parents. We've got to see, but it's basically, well, yeah, it's basically the same relationship that she had with her parents, with uh, Katara trying to mother her, trying to protect, I guess, protect her, make sure she doesn't get into trouble, that sort of thing. That's kind of what her parents did, but to a whole different extreme. And then Toph fights back. Yeah, we got to see Katara and Toph fix that, and now I'm really hoping that gets mirrored over to Toph's parents and Toph's relationship with them. And that just gets fixed. And we get to see a happy ending for them. Because when it, we, they ended in Toph's, yeah, that we didn't see him since Toph's first episode. And they've, they hired a bounty hunter to go after her. And the dad, I feel like he's probably the main problem. He's the one that hired the bounty. I think the mum was crying when it happened. So it's definitely the dad pushing this idea that she's helpless. Mum goes along with it, so they're both in the wrong. But I think uh, if they can get to the whole war thing, and they if they fix everything, and they just defeat Ozai and all of that stuff, and they become heroes to the world, hopefully that is enough to prove to Croft's parents that she's capable. She's good on her own. I'm not trying to think what else could prove it to them. Tara, again, we got to see some more developmental stuff. I think she was the second most developed focus of this episode, definitely more focused on Toph, but her dealing with the mother stuff and just her innate role as the mother of the group because she filled the void of her mother's dying. And she's trying to be fun. She, 
because I doubt she realizes that she became the mother. She was denying it and, of course, proving it to everyone around. So she doesn't realize what she's become after her mother's death. And it's almost nice that she's getting that self awareness and that she does want to be a kid. Can I try? I think she's fourteen. Ang's twelve. I think Sokka is older than Katara. I think Zuko is a teenager. He'll be older than all of them. Toph, I think, is twelve. So Katara is still a kid, early teenager, and yet she's taking on so much responsibility for now the entire group. It was just her family of three at the South Pole. Now it's this whole group of children. So you don't even have an actual adult there to help out. It's all on Katara. So I feel like this probably just didn't, the whole, this arrangement doesn't help Katara trying to let go of being the mother of the group. Now she's dealing with four, three other children. So it's nice to see her get that self-awareness and almost think to herself that she wants to have fun. She doesn't want to be the mother of the group. She just kind of fell into it naturally. And now she wants to get out of that. She wants to develop out of that. She wants to be a kid. And it's nice that she just has that. Sokka, I'm so happy with his development here. He, of course, comedy, yep. And he got the Hawk thing. That was kind of fun. But like just seeing his sort of getting to hear what he thought of his mother, that is something I've wanted for a while. We, it, from the start, their relation, Sokka and Katara's relationship with their parents were very much different. Sokka took after his father and he, he, that's basically all he talked about. Katara only talked about her mother. That was it. We never got to hear what the other thought about the other parent. It was just very much divided. Start of the season, we got to see Katara ha express her feelings of her father to her father. That was great that we got that built on. Now we've gotten to see Sokka and what his relationship with his mum is like. And it is heartbreaking. It is so sad. I mean, I love that he his character is so deep and complex. He is the funny guy in the group, but he also has this so such tragic thing about him that he can't even remember his own mother's face. Like when he looks back to think about his mother, all he sees is Katara. Yes, it's beautiful in the sense that it means that Katara took on the role, but she shouldn't have had to. And it's a shame that the mother that he had, he can no longer remember. I want to know if Katara can remember her mother, because I think Sokka is older than her. And it's like, would even Katara remember her mother's face? And of course, I think it's different because of course, Katara took on the role, so maybe she wouldn't just replace her mum because she sees them differently. Of course, Sokka doesn't have that same experience. He sees Katara filling the role that his mother had at a young age, so he conflates the two and sees his mother as Katara. It's so sad and so, I guess, beautiful. I don't. It's sweet and it's bittersweet. I wouldn't call it beautiful. It's tragic what's happened and it shouldn't have happened. It's just bad what the Fire Nation have done and taken their mother from them. It's messed with Sokka's memory of his own mother. It's meant Katara has given up a childhood to become the mother figure. And it's just so sad. It is sweet in the way that it means that Sokka views Katara as being the responsible one, the one that always looks after him and looks out for him. That is sweet, yes, but it shouldn't be the case. That should be his actual mum who was taken from them. This is this season so far has made me think differently of the Fire Nation, but this episode, it's making me think, it's bringing back season one feelings of them, where they are quite evil in what they've taken from two of the big main characters. Combustion Man, he's absolutely insane. I absolutely love him. He's an assassin. And like, I'm trying to figure out like power scaling, right? Because you have Azula who was brought in in season two, unbelievably powerful, blue fire, lightning galore. And now you have this guy who can shoot explosions. It's so, so insane. And I love that we got a bit more detail on how it works, because I think there are a few more shots here showing that the air came through his head. So he obviously has some kind of hole there. He breathes in. Air doesn't go through like that to the head. It goes into blood and that's how it gets to the head. Having it go from, I guess, his lungs up to the hole in his head, that's gotta be artificial. Something's been done to him. He's like some kind of experimental unit at the Fire Nation to create this insanely powerful firebender. I, I don't, I almost feel like he's a mix of firebending and airbending. The way he's using the air to do this, but then combustion is obviously fire. Could he be a mix of both? Could that be something? Like the sound design for him is absolutely insane. I'm gonna, I hope he shows up again. And I, I hope he doesn't get, I, I wonder what is gonna happen to him. Cause I just want him to show up more because of the sound design. I think it's so cool to hear that, just seeing the explosion and then have the sound echo out and that's the only thing you hear. It's so nice. But yeah, then this episode also showed off a huge weakness for him, or at least he's an insanely powerful character with an insanely difficult to reach weak point. It's reminding me of A New Hope in the sense that you have the Death Star, it's this incredibly powerful thing that destroys planets and has a tiny little weakness that Luke manages to hit. This guy is kind of like a Death Star. He has the laser in his head, this capable of destroying so much, and it's that tiny hole 
That is his weakness. Nothing else, because the guy is huge, and he has, like, metal appendages. And you can only hit that tiny spot to take him down. And it didn't really take him down. He could still cause explosions. Yes, it was closer to him. But I imagine if he tried to just tackle someone and then did it, it would still hurt a lot. But yeah, really want to know now if that is permanent. Like, can he heal from that? It must be a delicate thing that's going on in his head. So what is going on there? Because I need him to show up again just to see where he's at with the whole head thing. Because I really hope the gang saw that what happened because Toph did it, then the little stone hit away. I feel like she would know. She'd be able to sense the rock hitting him. I feel like they could know from that. Because now I want them to use it again when he next shows up and just to see what else, how else that will affect him. Tone of this episode, absolutely amazing. The way they dealt with keeping the comedy there, with the Toph jokes and doing that, playing around with the funny stuff. Yes, it was about light, but then it got into some really deep stuff with the parents and the death stuff. So that was really nice. And going into an action sequence at the end, the way the show, the, the way the creators of this show have managed to do all this is absolutely astonishing to me. They have 20 minutes to mess around with all of this. It flows so well, and they managed to cover so much in so little time. It blows my mind. I mean, they keep proving it in literally every episode we see how masterful they are with their writing. And I cannot wait to see where this all ends up with these guys at, like writing this. Seeing this episode, which was a character development episode, it wasn't something big for the plot, it was just developed Katara, Sokka, and Toph. That's what it did. It makes me wonder, what is it gonna be like for the actual full final of this show? With writers who could do something so amazing with a very small, technically filler episode, because it doesn't drive the plot forward, what are they gonna do for the final? The other finals, absolutely insane, but like for the final, final of the show, what are they gonna do? This episode also displays some other stuff about the civilians to me, because that's something I've been looking for, because we're in the Fire Nation, I want to see if the civilians are evil or good, or if it's just grey. So far it's been grey. This one feels very much evil. You have Combustion Man, who set the trap of the entire village. It might mean that they're closer to the Fire Nation's ideals, since they have a giant statue of Ozai, or with all the fire stuff. I feel like they might be closer in that regard. But the fact that they trapped Toph and Katara, they listened to Combustion Man, and then the whole place got destroyed. Which I'm hoping, I would assume the entire village got vacu evacuated. That means they would have been all on board with this plan to leave like that. So that means this entire village is kind of loyal to the Fire Nation and its goals. So it's good to see, we've, so that means we've seen a lot of villages and stuff like that that haven't been fully on board with the Fire Nation. Now we're seeing one that fully is. So there's a lot of diversity of thought throughout the people of the Fire Nation. So it is quite a divided nation. That is good. That means that when, hopefully, Ozai gets knocked off, you can put someone in his place that can at least have half of the population's approval. I think last I just wanted to talk about how creative the bending keeps getting. First off, Combustion Man, his bending is insane, and the boy they... Someone actually thought to take fire bending or air bending and turn it into someone being able to shoot explosions. That's really cool, and the, just the way he does it with the biologically having a hole in his head. But then having Katara be able to bend sweat. We've seen her bend cactus water in the desert, and now she's being able to bend liquid that's coming out of her body. That is interesting, and it's really cool that the writers are able to do that. It really makes me wonder, because, yeah, so it's, we've seen it twice now, when a bender is put somewhere where they can't use an element, how they're able to find a way to do something. Toph got locked in a metal box. She was completely out of Earth. She could do nothing. She invented earth metal bending. That's what happened when she was deprived of an element. When Katara is sort of deprived of an element, she figures out a way. Humans like 70% water. She's able to get the water out of herself to break her the timber jail cell. It makes me wonder what else she's able to do. If she can get sweat from herself, could she maybe... Like, there's water in so many other things, like trees and plants. Can she get water out of that? Yeah, I think this episode is... It might be my favourite so far. Everything is done, the creative bending, the writing, dealing with the tragedy stuff and the funny and the funniness of this episode, dealing with the blind jokes, they're great. And the action scene with Combustion Man, they're always insane and I hope we get some more of them because the I love the sound design. Anything, any episode with the, that, that sound design in it, I'm going to love it. Yeah, I can't wait to see what comes next because we're still, I don't know how close we are to the Day of Black Sound. They're not mentioning how many days they have left, so it feels like they could do anything in between now and then and I can't wait to see what else they're going to do. But yeah, with that said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one for Season 3, Episode 8. See ya!